Welcome to BA 101 Introduction to Business. In Chapter 1, we are going to be looking at um, the current state of business and really in today's environment. Change is the only constant that you can expect. As we go through this, um, this chapter, pay particular attention to these um, these questions and make sure that you're taking notes so that you're able to answer any questions that may come up on quizzes or midterms or that might be relevant for any of the chapter assignments. So as we go through this video we're going to discuss um, what exactly business is and the role of business in the economy. We'll review a, a brief uh, um, history of the evolution of modern business. We'll take a look at the role of nonprofit organizations in the economy, outline the core factors of production and how they affect the economy. We'll take a very brief look at today's business environment and how it relates to each key dimension. And then finally, uh, we'll begin to review how current business trends might affect your career choices as you are looking towards uh, graduating either this year or in the next year and what that means for you. Now, businesses, um, in order to stay relevant, businesses have to embrace change. And the reason that they have to do this is um, the current environment is not stagnant. If Henry Ford, for example, were still trying to sell his model, uh, model T's, then, you know, he who drives any of those anymore unless you are someone that is interested in old cars. So you have to be able to change and that includes businesses and you do that in order to seek out new opportunities and to avoid pitfalls as far as becoming irrelevant. You have to be able to evaluate your risks, understand the market and adhere to ethical practices so you can't be a monopoly that squashes all um, upcoming businesses. You also need to be able to generate long-term profits by delivering unsurpassed value to customers. And this is very important. So value, when we're thinking about business, value has to do with the relationship between the price of a good or service and the benefits that it offers. So people need to be willing to purchase the good or the service. And if they're not, it doesn't bode so well for the business idea. So exactly what is business? So business is any organization or activity that does provide a good or service in an effort primarily to earn a profit. Now a profit is where sales and or revenue minus expenses leave you with extra money and that extra money is is profit and businesses that is their goal is to earn a profit now it is possible for a business to incur a loss and that is when your expenses are greater than the revenue that you are generating and while it is possible to have short-term losses for example, maybe a quarter or, you know, when a business is first starting out, sometimes it takes a few months in order to earn a profit, but that's not sustainable. So for long-term health of a business, you, all, you need to um, have a model that will generate profit in the long run. Now, within uh, business, we have a group of people that are called entrepreneurs. And entrepreneurs are people who risk all of their time, money, and other resources to start and manage their own business. Um, 
they do this in the interest of improving a standard of living and the standard of living can be their own it can be the communities or it can even be you know broader in terms of improving the standard of living for uh, people in another country now standard of living is the quality and quantity of goods and services that are available to a population and um, so as businesses are trying to improve the well-being uh, that's really talking about the quality of life and creating an overall sense of well-being and that can be it can be real or perceived um, so you can have a company for example Apple with their iPhones when people buy the new product they they have a sense of ah, I've got the latest and the greatest technology and then there are other companies that look at being socially responsible and they're interested in distributing health care to everyone within in the country or making sure that everybody has access to food so these are some ideas of you know organizations that are operating under the business umbrella that are trying to make uh, make the world a better place now business has evolved <coughs> from when we take a look back we have what was called the Industrial Revolution. And you may have learned about this in one of your history courses. During the uh, Industrial Revolution, which happened in the mid 1700s, this is when mass production started to gain importance and big factor, factories started overtaking skilled artisan shops. So you saw you know, back in that day, really a lot of sweatshops, but you saw all of a sudden big plants being produced. Now, during the second half of the 1800s, we had large scale entrepreneurs building business empires that generated wealth, not only for society, but as that wealth was created, it raised society's entire standard of living. So some examples of people that were huge tycoons in the, US, in, the, in the United States, think of the Rockefellers, think of the Hearst. These were all um, industrious, uh, powerful businessmen that really changed the scope of the American, the American public. And as they built wealth for themselves, they also built wealth for other people. During the early part of the 1900s, we find ourselves in what is called the production era. And this is where businesses refined their production process and they created even greater efficiencies by increasing productivity and lowering costs and prices. Henry Ford is a great example of someone who looked at all the different steps that were necessary to create an automobile and he was able to take um, at that time it took about for most automobile manufacturers it took about 12 hours to make a car Henry Ford, by looking at efficiencies and looking at how to streamline the process, was able to get car production down to two hours. So that was huge. All of a sudden, he was able to flood the, uh, the market with his cars. And General Motors wasn't, you know, they had to make some adjustments in order to keep up with that. So after the 1900s and the production era, we find ourselves slipping into the marketing era. And this happened primarily after the Second World War. This is where markets shifted from being producer-centric 
to consumer centric. And that means all of a sudden consumers had a variety of choices that they could make in terms of the products that they purchased instead of just buying ivory soap suddenly they could buy dial they could buy uh, palm olive they could buy coast so there were all these different um different items that they could choose from and this created a lot of um, this is really where you started to see brand recognition and branding happened to help consumers understand the differences between their product and their competitors. And then finally, in when we look at today's uh, business, this is really considered the relationship era. And what separates this from the other eras before it is that most companies really aim to build and nurture long-term relationships with their consumers. If a business is able to meet its consumers' needs, the consumers are able to give a large-scale publicity to the business by saying good things about it to their friends, to your relatives. Uh, we see the power of this with Facebook and Twitter, even Snapchat, where somebody buys a product, they can give it a fantastic review and everybody reads it. Likewise, if we see a product that's had a problem, it can also bring down a, a company. So the relationship era is the era that we're all living in here and now. Now we have nonprofits and Nonprofits do act like a for-profit company. They hire people and they do produce a good and a service. What separates a nonprofit from a, a profit-oriented company is that their goal is to make the community better and to serve the greater good rather than just focusing on money. So you see uh, here in Oregon, you have the Oregon Food Bank, for example, that collects food and collects money, and then they redistribute that to communities throughout Oregon with the goal of ending uh, hunger for children and anyone that you know doesn't have money to buy food. You can have nonprofits such as Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts that are designed to teach leadership skills and community service. And as those young Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts grow up, the idea is that they take those skills and then share it with the community in whatever area their passion is so that society is becoming better. Now when we're looking at um, production, both businesses and nonprofits depend on what we call factors of production to achieve their objectives. These factors help the economic system to function and to create wealth. Some of these factors are natural resources, which are um, land, fresh water, wind, mineral deposits. The value of all natural resources tends to rise with high demand, low supply, or, or both. Capital, that includes machines, tools, buildings, information technology, and so forth. Capital, in this sense, does not include money, but obviously, companies need to have money in order to acquire, maintain, and upgrade their capital. There's human resources. That includes the physical, intellectual, and creative inputs of all people who work within an economy. And finally, we have uh, entrepreneurs. 
and entrepreneur, entrepreneurs see hidden opportunities and they use their own resources to make the best use of these opportunities. So entrepreneurs help the economy by creating opportunities and harnessing other factors of production. What's interesting is that an entrepreneur, while they might see an opportunity, if the environment doesn't support them, in other words, businesses and or consumers don't see a need for the product, then that entrepreneur will not be successful and their business idea or their service will cease to exist. Uh, one example is when Back in the late 70s, when VHS tapes were um, really becoming available to consumers, there was also an in-home system called Beta. And Beta was another way that you could watch in-home movies, which was new for consumers at that time. Well, Beta was far more expensive, and consumers never really bought it. Even though, interesting enough, um, the quality of beta production, which was uh, superior to VHS, but because of price barriers and, you know, there was this big competition between beta and VHS, and VHS won. And um, the environment did not support the uh, use of beta technology. And so you don't see that anymore. Now, a business environment, that is the setting in which a business operates. And it's, depending on what is happening in the environment, it can make a difference in whether uh, the business will survive or not. And not, you know, we look not only at the business, but we look at the general economy. Is it an economy that is growing, that supports change and supports business? Or is it an economy that is struggling? Like we have been in Oregon over the last, oh, five or six years where we've had higher unemployment and, you know, our economy has not been one that would support new businesses, but that's all changing. And so, if you are looking to start a business, you want to start a business in an economy that will support that. Now, in the business environment, we have five factors. We have the economic environment, the social environment, the global environment, the technological environment, and the competitive environment. And I'm going to touch on what each one of these are. So when we are looking at uh, changes within a market, uh, we have to consider a, how quickly a firm is able to make a product from, to go from the idea stage into the actual product. And when you're in that idea stage, you have to really step back and take a look at your competitive environment. Are you able to move quickly? So we have two different types of firms. We have bleeding edge firms, which is a firm that puts a product out there that is really too far ahead of the market. Going back to the beta and VHS idea. Beta was way ahead of the market, which is one reason why they, you know, they collapsed. Leading edge firms, these are firms that offer products as the market is ready to embrace them. So you have um, your iPhones, and they are constantly changing the phones, making them better. And they do, Apple does a great job of marketing to the consumer and 
you know, every year when they launch the latest iPhone, people are ready. Those consumers and those businesses that are purchasing those phones, they are ready for that product and whatever uh, newness it, you know, they're bringing. We have to look at the workforce. So the workforce can really make or break a firm's competitive advantage. If you have workers that are satisfied, they enjoy working for you, they will give, give their all to help improve the company, improve the bottom line because they are dedicated. And likewise, if employees are dissatisfied and you have a high turnover, that can be a huge disadvantage. Um, it, it's really important to cultivate human resources that allow the firm to compete for your top talent. Right now, in the current work environment, companies are hungry for skilled workers and it's hard right now for people to find um, employees that have the skills that they need so from an employee standpoint it's a really good time to be looking for a good job and uh, so it's very important from a business standpoint to always be offering benefits to your um, to your workforce training um, pay you want to be able to have people that want to work for you rather than your competitors business technology so these are um, with technology, these are tools that businesses use to become more efficient and effective. And of course, you're very familiar with the World Wide Web, and that allows computers, computer users to access and share information on the internet. And this has really revolutionized business in the last probably 10 to 15 years. We've also seen the growth of Amazon and e-commerce so there's a lot of efficiencies to use technology to you know to sell your product online if you don't have to have a big old store that's cheaper and this is all new you use um, software to do your accounting you use software to manage your inventory so Technology plays a bigger and bigger role in firms, and it's important to have those systems in place that support your business activity. The social environment. We have demographics that, um, demographics is a measurable characteristic of a population, such as the population size and density, age, gender, race, education, and income. It's important as you're building your business to understand who are you trying to sell your product to? Are you targeting someone that is in their mid-20s who's probably pretty hip in terms of technology? Or are you looking for technology, using technology as an example, if we were to sell a product to senior citizens, how might that differ from the 20 year old? Maybe you need bigger keys, you need screens that make the uh, help with the visibility. So you have to really understand who your target market is and what makes them tech. And not only does that apply to the state or city, state, country, but we have to take a look at the social environment of various countries because we have, here in the United States, we have immigrants that come from all over the world. 
but we also are selling products all over the world. So if we are selling um, a product to Indonesia, we need to understand Indonesian culture and what the norms are and how they're different from those of us that are in the United States so that we're um, not culturally insensitive. We are not stepping on, you know, some social taboos. And it, so we just have to be very, very aware. Now, within the social environment, I've talked about some of this. We have diversity. So we have here in the United States, we have people from more and more countries. And so um, as our immigration and as our uh, population changes, that is going to impact the social environment that we live in. We have an aging population. The baby boomers are currently make up the biggest segment of our population. And that is definitely a market that we need to pay particular attention to. There are rising worker expectations. Workers expect to earn a livable wage. They're concerned about benefits. They're concerned about time off. And with your business, you need to, you know, have have a program in place that attracts those workers. And then there's always um, ethics and social responsibility. Um, so what type of pollution does your business present? If I mean, all businesses, all of us create some type of pollution. So how can we minimize that? Is there a recycling program? Is there a branch of the business that is caring for children or maybe, you know, concerned about literacy? So there are all sorts of areas that we need to take a look at. Now, in our global environment, in the global environment, in the, when we start looking outside of the boundaries of the United States, we have uh, what's considered free trade. And free trade is where there is an agreement between uh, two countries that helps to move products and services more freely between uh, international boundaries. So we have the, um, the GATT which is the General Agreements on Tariffs and Trades. And this is an agreement that was made between, I believe it was Mexico and Canada, where international trade, it lowers taxes and it promotes free trade worldwide. So as Mexico and the United States are trading are selling products, importing and exporting different products. Both countries keep the import export tax low and they do that to foster a positive business environment. So lower prices can increase quality of product categories and it makes for you know more interesting brands as we look at the shelves. Where I see this really, um, where I see one example I should say of seeing this is in the grocery store. So if you go back maybe 20, 30 years ago, you did not have, if you go to the produce section, you had very little produce that was out of season. So you might have lettuce and you had bananas. If you had any grapes that were outside, available outside of the summer, they were terribly expensive. But now, um, 
the U.S. imports grapes from Mexico and from other Central American and South American countries. Chile is a, a big country that um, exports to us. And you will see produce that is available year-round, and that has made for a richer uh, food experience. And that, you know, you've got fresh quality produce that you can buy all the time. And it wasn't that way 20, 30 years ago. Now, in our global environment, so while there's, you know, positives as far as lowering um, lower taxes, if some countries have that agreement, you have some threats that happen. So we had the 9-11 attack, and we've got war and terrorism that is creating a bigger um, threat to the travel industry, and that threat continues to grow. I mean, we've seen an attack on Paris this year. We've seen, with the global environment, diseases now travel faster than they ever have because they can be picked up on people that are infected and they get on an airplane and travel around the world. So SARS is an example of, it's a type of flu that's affected the economies of Hong Kong, Beijing, and Toronto because people suddenly weren't able to travel. We have natural disasters that can cause a problem. So um, when we had a tsunami in Indonesia that wiped out the fishing industry in the Indian and Sri Lankan coastlines. So there's always threats that you can have a catastrophe in one part of the world that affects another part of the world. Now business in you. So, um, from both a, a very big, broad standpoint down to the individual, it's very important that you have a business that provides skills that helps to influence the level of financial success that you have, that you need. So. As a young person that is thinking about your careers, you want to make sure that you are able to offer something to either a future employer or if you have a great business idea, do you have the skills that you need in order to be successful? So you have to constantly be looking to develop these skills. Now entrepreneurship, this is a fabulous career choice. And, you know, if you have a particular passion, there's nothing more satisfying than creating a business and a product that allows you to do what you love. And with a successful uh, business, you are able to greatly improve your chance of both financial, success, financial and personal success. Bill Gates is a great example with Microsoft of a man that had a passion for technology and clearly he's very very intelligent but he took his product and he continued to um, evolve help it to evolve so that Microsoft is now this huge um, software program that millions of people worldwide use. And if Bill Gates hadn't been willing to, you know, explore computer programming and continue to um, work in that field and to learn new skills, Microsoft would not be what it is today. So in today's business scenario, we live in a very complicated environment. It is global and it changes incredibly fast. So 
we always, you know, in the business world, we have to keep an eye on what is happening globally and whether or not we're entering a, a, a time frame where there's a, you know, globally things are growing or are they contracting? Europe, for example, is currently experiencing an economic crisis. Well, how is that going to affect the United States? That, you know, we are all connected more, more so now than we ever have been. So we always have to keep an eye on that. Technology, that continues to change the business landscape. What will be the next new application or software program that revolutionizes what we do today? I don't know, but we have to stay abreast and maybe you'll have the idea that changes it. There is a renewed focus on ethics and social responsibility and how that uh, impacts the role of business in society. There, in recent history, we have the Occupy movement that is saying, hey, we need to be making a reasonable wage and you know, they continue to protest. And you've got some businesses in response, they're raising minimum wage, or other businesses are leveling out the amount of money that uh, all their employees are, are earning. Is there gender equity? Are men and women in the same position earning the same amount of money? So this is a growing issue, and, and um, it's just really important that as you're thinking about a business and thinking about where you might want to go, what role does that business have in society, and what do their business ethics look like? So looking back... We've defined business and the role of business in the economy with um, a brief history of the evolution of the modern business. We've discussed the role of nonprofit organizations in the economy. We also spent time outlining the core factors of production and how they affect the economy. We've looked at today's business environment and discussed each key dimension and finally, we've taken a very brief look at current business trends and how they may affect your career choices. So this ends chapter one. So as we're getting started in this class, it's really important that, um, that you're taking good notes, that if you have questions regarding anything that we've gone over, you know, please contact me either by phone or by email. And most importantly, because, excuse me, this is a college class, super important that you uh, meet the deadlines of the class because we move quickly. We're just touching the different layers of business very superficially in this class, but it's to give you just a taste for what... Um, what business is, and hopefully maybe spark an interest for you, and uh, maybe there's an area that you might want to study. So uh, please review the lecture, please read the, the lesson, and you've got a quiz to take, and make a, introduce yourself to the class. So I look forward to uh, getting to know each of you, and again, if you have any questions, please uh, do not hesitate to reach out to me.